Dada Vichnik. G'day guys. Ooh, sounds a bit high. It's only about six cows in there, they make a heck of a racket. Audio, we are going to the sheep farm. We're now in 1.1. And it's time to see if these sheep regrow their wool. Well, it looks like they certainly eat the grass. Ooh. All you New Zealanders, close your eyes. Sight of so many naked sheep, don't you, when you're getting too excited? I thought they were moving around, but they're actually eating the grass so quick that they're growing back before I can go past and shear any others. Oh, well, there you go. So yes, it is working. Now, I've only got like four of each colour sheep here, so it's not going to take long to um, build up a decent amount of uh, the different colour wools. any in-game pixel art, it's going to be good. So, awesome, check that out. More of some than others. Be interested to see if anyone's done any experimentation to see if any particular colour sheep do any, uh, grow their wool back less than others. Interesting concept. So, awesome. Okay, I'll spend a little bit more time here and uh, see you later. Well, here's something I wasn't expecting. Seem to have had a uh, escapee here glitching out through the fence. To see if I can get this one back. Plan. It's working for everybody else, just not this one out here. Great. Going completely around the outside here. I hope none of the sheep pump me off. <laughs> well, I'll see you once I've got it back in. Okay, that's one complete set of shears. And a uh, nice little different coloured walls. Excellent. Okay, I've got to light this area over here up better to um, improve my uh, mob spawning ability. Okay, we've redone all our uh, trunks around here, so I've got now got the different walls where they need to be. Nice, and uh, where there's some dye left over, got that there as well. Oh, 
There we go. Just got to replace that lapis block. Well, this uh, mob spawner is um, enderman friendly. I don't get a lot of them out of it, but um, I get enough to make it interesting. Oh, I have been doing some uh, changes around the place. Number one, I uh, created a uh, on-off switch for the slime farm. Basically, it's off at the moment. Uh, I figure half a trunk of slime balls is enough. Uh, I've actually got a few more stacks around other places as well. So this basically goes down uh, through the shaft here. And I'll see if I can see it from down here. No. You can just see it up there. Yeah. Okay, we're up here with the level with the wiring now where it comes out of the wall. And as you can see, it uh, is run by uh, dots controlling torches, dots of redstone controlling torches. Um, and this is the way you can vertically wire down. If you're wiring up, you only need one, one block wide and you have one, top, one torch on top of each block to wire down. This is probably about the easiest way to do it, um, certainly the most space effective. So I had plenty of room in the elevator shaft here for this wiring to come down here. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, turned the spawning pads off with water. Uh, it's not perfect, but it um, seems to stop the majority of them spawning, certainly the large ones. Uh, and I haven't seen any of the small ones come up here while this is on either. Yeah. I've got this room half slabbed out. As you can see, uh, the two edge ones are controlled. One, one piston controlling one water source block which flows down two holes. And the ones in the middle are single pistons with single source blocks. That's just a case of uh, redstone on. Water off. Oh, small mushroom farms around the place. Very, very basic. And as we go up the elevator, you get another good look at that wiring. As you can see it. Alright. Okay, what else have I been doing? Well, I was uh, doing some farming of uh, these oak trees here. Just basically plant a s sapling hit it with some bone meal and then cut it down and I thought well I want to do something a little bit different to that I remembered in one of my other worlds I had a uh, block form of uh, trees which was basically just a huge block which you just basically had a few torches in and it managed to fill itself up with um, with trees well I was looking at that and then I saw something else on the on another uh, YouTube video. Now I'll put a link to the guy who I saw make it. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'll put it in the links. Basically, this is it. So I get my tree there. I'll get my bone meal here. Switch this on, which turns a clock on. 
Sometimes this does take a fair bit of bone meal. And sometimes hardly any at all. And sometimes it just seems to take forever. Any rate. What this basically does is push the tree, the wood from the tree out of the way and then another bank of pistons push it out. Now it can only push 12 long, so these banks of pistons push it all the way out, as you can see here. And when it comes time to chop some wood down, simple matter of hacking your way through the whole lot. As you can imagine it wouldn't take very long at all to get a stack of wood out of this lot. There's a stack and a half already. Although I probably already did have some on me. The only hassle with this system is that you don't get many saplings back. So you basically do have to farm uh, other wood at other times to get your saplings back out of it. Now I shortened the cactus farm in order to fit all that in. Now this still works exactly the same way. Just go and pick up all your cactuses. And replant. And I've got plenty of cactus as well. I've also got green sheep, so I don't really need them. It's just nice to have. You know, I'll turn this off. That is really annoying. This uh, manages to control the door even though I set it one away. Anyway, the wiring at the back is pretty basic. Uh, now, the guy who invented it had a piston clock. I, don't, I just melt this one because this is one I know how to build and it's very compact and doesn't involve any pistons. And then it's simply one bank of pistons which push the wood out to out in that direction once the tree's grown. Now there's a uh, repeater on both sides of this um, block here with an empty space in between. When a tree grows it forms a, um, a link through there and powers up all the other uh, pistons here which push this along one and then this bank of pistons push out as well. Now because they can only push out 12, as soon as there's extra um, trees they go past it. So you do get some uh, bits of leaf growth around the place but that's why all those glass blocks are in there to try and cut that down to a minimum. Now there's a delay set on this, just so that this pushes out well after this actually pushes across. I did have to reroute the wiring on this wheat farm a little bit, but uh, it's nothing too difficult. The end of it. Right, so I'm getting a few more bits of wool here and there. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but some of the sheep seem to regrow their wool a lot slower than other ones. And I have a feeling that I only have two magenta sheep up there, but I'm not 100% sure. I have to go and check that out some other time. 
Now I saw Automator MC redid his um, cow farm. And I've got to say, his is a heck of a lot smaller than mine is. So I'm thinking very, very seriously about knocking this one down and rebuilding a much smaller version, which is his. Basically, his would fit into just this front area and leave that whole back area for something else. Or I could probably push this across a bit. Now, the chicken farm, I am going to rip out this maze of wiring. Uh, I originally built this to save me redstone, but it actually uses more because of the wiring that goes out to the pistons than it would do if I just had a simple uh, triple uh, monostable circuit going up here. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, that's pretty much all the changes that I've been doing around here. Well, we've got a thunderstorm coming tonight, so I better uh, call it quits here. And always remember, But the hippo has no sting, but the wise man would rather be sat on by a bee. Cheers all.